All right, guys, today we got a 2016 Chevy Silverado 2500 with a Duramax in it. We got a check engine light on. I'm not a diesel guy, you guys know that, but we got to get it fixed. Let's get into it. All right, so this video is a little bit different. We kind of have an idea which path we're going down. Uh, we're not 100% sure what's wrong with the vehicle yet, but we just want to show you guys you know, some, some, especially for younger guys. I mean, for me, I'm the younger guy when we're dealing with diesels. I'm, I'm not really, haven't done diesels my whole life other than like Volkswagens and BMWs, things like that. So the truck stuff is definitely not my thing. But, you know, we got to fix cars, right? We got to fix vehicles. So I wanted to show you kind of the path that I would take on this one. And hopefully it's going to lead us to the answer. We kind of already think we will, we, we think we're going to go down the right path, but who knows? We'll see. <laughs> so I already done a, a, the full vehicle scan. And, Let's go ahead and look in the engine control module. And here we see we've got a P2033, uh, a P10 Delta Zero, and a P20 Echo Two. So, um, and, and the two digits after that, the zero zeros on this one won't, won't really help us much, but sometimes you will see codes, you know, the zero ones or tens or other numbers or letters after that, and those can help you. But in this particular case, we're not going to have to go down that path, I don't think. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over and, you know, I could I could go lots of paths here. We could go in and go down, um, go into all data, look up these codes. But the first thing I'm going to do, just because it's quick and it's easy, is come over here to Identifix. So here we are. We're in Identifix. And... I put the VIN number in. I've already done this, so I'm just I'm taking you back through how I did it. Um, this is not a sponsored video for Identifix at all, but it is something that we believe in. We use, right? We use it all the time, and I believe when used correctly, it's a fantastic tool. It is not a silver bullet. Do not just go in here, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by silver bullet, to... Zero, echo two, all right. I always put in all the codes. So if I've got six, seven, eight codes, 10 codes, whatever it may be, whatever will fit here because you do run out of space up there on that search line, I will put in um, all the codes because a lot of times if it matches everything, then that's fantastic. That's what we're kind of looking for, okay? Now in this, in this one, it does match everything. And so here's where the unfortunate circumstance can happen. Somebody will come in here. Well, actually they won't even get this far. They'll go right here and they'll say, oh, 20 temperature sensors, put one in it, right? So we're not going to do that. We're not going to go right here and say 20 temperature sensors are bad. You know, that's, that's all of them. And look at there. Oh man, more temperature sensors, right? And if you got a bunch of them, you know, sometimes you'll have a long list of things here and they'll just throw a temperature sensor in it. That's not what this is designed for, but unfortunately it's how it gets used a lot. It gets used a lot. This is... The, the fantastic thing about this is this section right here. All this right here, right? This is a short test where, you know, they've had this problem numerous times, enough times that they've, they've detailed out a test plan for us that we can get in and get out of this car and either determine that, yes, this is the problem or no, it's not the problem. So in this case, you know, we've got, using the scanner, we're going to determine the temperature value of of this sensor, right? And if the value indicates 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit, then we're gonna go to that sensor, right? If, if it says that, we go to the sensor, we find the sensor under the vehicle, wherever it may be located, and we're gonna take a jumper wire going from the dark blue light green wire to the black dark blue wire. And we have not done this yet. We're gonna, we're gonna do this and see what the scanner does. And we're gonna recheck the scanner value, right? If the temperature now indicates minus 40, then we're going to replace the sensor. So what this is telling me, and again, we got to use logic here, right? So what this is, is telling me is that with 1,832 shown on the, on the scanner, then that's an open circuit, right? That more than likely that's a default, um, a default value for an open circuit. I don't know that. Don't, don't, you know, chisel that in, in granite, but I just feel like that's more than likely what that means, right? And then a minus 40 would be a default value of a, of a, um, of a shorted circuit. 1832 would be an open circuit and the 
minus 40 would be a shorted circuit. I don't, I, I'm sorry if I misspoke there. 1832, open circuit, minus 40, shorted circuit. And the reason I say that is because we're going to short these two wires together. So, uh, again, I'm not saying that's 100% what, what they're trying to prove out, but I feel like it is. So, if we go over now to our scanner and we find our, go into the engine control module, go into data stream, right? And then we're going to go find this this sensor, right? We're going to go look at the value of this sensor. So, again, I'm not the greatest with diesels. Um, we're going to pick something here and we're going to see if we see temperature sensors. And that one says B131 and B exhaust temperature sensor 2. So, I know these things have a bunch of exhaust temperature sensors on them. So here's exhaust temperature sensor one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. So there's our temperature sensor two, right here, 1832, and that matches. So we have, the code is for temperature sensor two, our temperature sensor two is at 1832 degrees Fahrenheit, which is exactly what we're, you know, what the, the test procedure says. The other ones, and this is, uh, this is just good, you know, uh, a good process to think about every time you're you're doing anything anything with any temperature sensor work. If you notice that all of the temperature sensors, I, I will do this if I'm looking at coolant temp sensor, intake air temperature sensor, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna pull up every temperature sensor that I can that I can possibly get on the screen. And what I'm looking for is the one that just kind of stands out as being, you know, way different than the others. So a lot of times you can see, you know, if you've got an intake air temperature sensor that's sitting at 85 degrees, you haven't run the engine at all, and the coolant temp sitting at, you know, 210. You got an issue, right? So that's it's just good, kind of the Sesame Street thing. Which one stands out? In this case, this one definitely stands out. So let's go ahead and continue following the procedure, which is to, to locate the sensor and then taking a jumper wire. We're going to go dark blue to light green and we're going to see what happens to the 1832 degrees. I had to try to figure out what sensor was what. We know that there's four of them on this thing. The, in the picture that I was looking at, um, actually, in Identifix, click down below it, and it gave you a, a diagram, a picture of what I thought was going to be the sensor, and it showed what we find out as number three sensor. So, how did I determine that? Well, first, I looked at the wire colors, and the wire colors were wrong. So, I'm like, okay, well, it's not going to hurt to unplug the thing. So, I unplugged it, and when I unplugged it, the temperature reading for the third one went to 1,832. So... We know now that when it's an open circuit, it's 1832. So that's what we're looking for here. So I've moved to the one forward of that. And it's not super difficult to get to the connector. I don't know if you're going to build. You're definitely not seeing it from there. 100% not seeing it from there. Here, like maybe take it from you. Maybe we're going to go right there. So that's the connector. I'm just going to disconnect it. Let me try to do that while I'm holding the camera. All right, and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna jump these two. See if I can't get this for you guys. I don't really wanna disconnect this from the frame. I don't need to, so there, I'm gonna try to jump where the pins there. I don't know if you guys can see those pins or not. But. All right, so that's what my plan is. And then we're gonna watch the data and we're gonna see if, I gotta get out of here. And we're going to see if the data changes. So I'm just going into my AES Wave jumper lead kit. Love it. I'm going to grab a wire and then hopefully be able to grab what is this thing? So I couldn't see it good from the camera. I don't know if you guys could or not. Alright, two. They're just flat blades. So, get a couple of female flat blades here. I don't know if those are the right ones or not. As long as they make contact, we're good. This is quite difficult to lay here and do this. I'd much rather have this thing on a rack. It is what it is. All right. One in. Yeah, we got no racks available right now. We are covered up. Here's the wires connected. 
I've just got two flat blade jumpers in there and I've got the wire here. Hopefully that makes sense. I've just basically made a loop. And if we look at the scan data, we see that it's right at 40, minus 40 degrees. I'm gonna unhook it and let's see what it goes to. So if I back to 1832 and I'm gonna plug it back in. So if I plug it back in, can you touch that screen for me, Sherwood? It's going dim for, on me, all right. Plug it back in, no change. So pretty straightforward. Looks like we got a bad sensor. And here, give me the camera and I'll show where the sensor is so you guys can see it. So, there it is right here. So not super, super hard to get to. Throw a little air coil on that. I think it's going to come out. But we'll get a sensor here, we'll put it in, and then we'll come back and we'll see if we've got it fixed up. So we got the sensor in it. Let's run back in real quick. Just do a real quick after here. Uh, aftermarket, I think, was where we were here. Aftermarket, it's also aftermarket data. That's where we were anyway. Yep. Let's take a look at them real fast. Truck is running right now. Codes have been cleared. And there's our, there's our sensors. All reading perfect. So there it was. You know, got good data here. I'm not a, di I'm not a diesel guy, but got it figured out with the help of you know, using Identifix, which I think is a good tool to have. And, um, you know, just another, another, you know, tool in your arsenal to get cars fixed, get vehicles fixed in a timely fashion. So, you know, we can all out there, you know, making money. So hope you guys liked it. If you did hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you want to see. We'd love to read them. Appreciate you. We'll see you in the next one.